folks, it's Miguel Adorati back here on the MMA Museum, and I am joined by Bob Voss. We are doing another one of our MMA Classic Fight segment, and uh, we're going to go back to August of 2006. And uh, the very, very first Bodog show, the, this was uh, Bodog flying everyone down to Costa Rica for fights. And uh, we selected a, a middleweight war uh, between uh, Trevor Prangley and Casey Uscola. A couple of warriors. This was a slugfest, Bob. What do you remember about this? Man, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't very familiar with either one of those guys prior to the to this fight. Um, once again, this is one of the shows where I was uh, a judge. Um, and uh, so I brought myself up to speed on it. But both of those guys are as tough as can be. Um, both of the, those guys like to scrap. Um, there, there's not a whole lot of uh, warming up in either one of these two guys. They like to get out there and get after it. So there's a, it was a highly anticipated fight. I mean, out of the, out of the ones that were in that, uh, that, yeah, that season, and sure. it lived up to that. Yep, yeah, this was the first season, and Trevor worked his way up. Um, eventually, for Bodog, he fought Yuki Kondo. A Japanese mm -hmm. legend and won the Bodog Fight Middleweight Championship. Uscola was trailing him. Uh, you know, he knocked some wins right after this uh, to get back on the horse. But uh, they met uh, to to open up uh, the very first Bodog series, and they actually were, I believe, the very first fight uh, of the Bodog series. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to do a three, two, one, and start checking this thing out here. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. And uh, we got uh, referee Troy Waugh warming up to uh, Uscola in the corner here. Uh, Trevor bouncing around and pacing in the, his corner. You can see it looks like a jungle. This is actually a hotel uh, conference room that was dressed up by the Bodog uh, production crew to look like a jungle because of the Costa Rica. You know, they were going to go full on with the Costa Rica setting there. Well, I do uh, remember seeing a panther in there that looks yeah. strangely enough like Dave Strasser, but uh, yeah, yeah, that is, Dave. Uh, there was a makeup room for the models, and maybe we'll get a shot or two of some of the models here. It was uh, that was something to behold as well. Um, yeah. But this was a star-studded evening. Uh, not a lot of people in the audience, um, but uh, we're about to see. This was the opening fight, and uh, it's a slugfest, and we'll take you through. Some of the stuff, uh, uh, the bells and whistles here as well as as they come out. Uh, Uscola, a little smaller. Uscola, um, you know, not shy to throw the fists. And, uh, you know, we'll see him. He's, he starts off with a leg kick. Apparently starts throwing at him. And uh, Uscola is uh, going to answer relatively quickly. Did not allow that first takedown to go down. And they, man, that shot. Nice, nice left from Uscola. Yeah, you know, Trevor Tre 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 like obviously it. in great shape, too. Yeah, Great for sure. Team. For sure. Trevor didn't like that when he clinched up a little bit. And Uskola is getting him. Trevor's starting to throw that uppercut, which works for him throughout the fight. Um, and, uh, you know, you got the Troy paying attention here. You got, you can see the crowd is just maybe two or three rows deep. And um, to start the crowd, I'm going to warn you people, we're going to throw some names around in here in a minute. You got... Uh, in the white shirt, there's Vlad. He's the pr promoter of uh, MFC who teamed up with Bodog. And Vadim and next, right next to him. Next to him is Vadim, who's uh, Fedor Milianenko's manager. And uh, we'll start with those two. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're they're clinched up. They're, they have not so though that. Neither one of these guys mind working off the clinch. Yeah, they're and both, Uskola caught a, caught a big punch right in the face and to come forward, you know. Now, Trevor is bigger, maybe stronger. It's, you know, Muscol is not not a weakling, so it's not. Yeah, easy. He's turned Trevor back into the ropes. He's, you know. Yeah, yeah, he knows he, what he's, he's doing. He's, he's trying to tie up that hand. He's he is already not appreciating the uppercut. Trevor turned to some knees. Uh, Uscola answers with a knee of his own. Like they're I said, they're, yeah. they're really. This is more advanced fighting than some of the other fights that we've seen on the MMA classic fight segment. We've been in the nineties and you see a little bit more rough, uh, rough Biff audience. Naked. You see Biff Natalia. naked, a Canadian punk rock star and, uh, Natalia Vlad's wife. And, uh, they were both, uh, 
for the TV show considered the matchmakers. Uh, so I was not considered uh, pretty enough for TV, I guess, you know, so. <laughs> Both of these guys super comfortable working off the ropes. Yeah, um, and, and they are throwing punches. They and they're not creating a lot of space. So no. they both feel confident in working their inside game. Yeah, you um, can see, you, you know, you look for little telltale signs of Skull. It took a deep breath before wading back in there. Um, I don't know if Prangley's Friday. You got Eve Edwards there. You got Roger Gracie there. And the, the interesting thing Fedor. is next to Roger Gracie, you had Fedor Emelianenko. So you had Roger and Fedor front row uh, for the fights. Um, like I said, uh, you know, a big audience uh, of uh, of big names there. And uh, we had lots really, of names there. George yeah. Madden was there. And, um, and both both Roger and Fedor later fall uh, under the Bulldog flag. Uh, you got uh, th that looked like uh, uh, David Avalon, who uh, would later fight in Bulldog fight. Uh, he fought a late replacement fight against uh, Frenchman Anthony Rea that turned into probably the bloodiest fight in uh, Bodog fight history. Um, and uh, he pulled it out. Uh, he got his nose oh. destroyed in the opening minutes of the fight. And uh, he actually went on to win the fight. You got Uskola you working. Tell it from looking at him. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he, he actually, he got flown to an, uh, a, whole, a hospital and came back and he had uh, pins put in his head that, uh, held a brace that stabilized his neck uh, so mm. that he couldn't move because the nose break was so bad and it was, he was doing so some good work on top here yeah uh, he's got he, Trevor opened up a little bit there yeah and, he's got uh, blood he's bleeding in two places he's bleeding from the mouth he's bleeding from the head and Scola did get a reversal there which against prangley is uh not easy um Scola is a little a good because base. Because he's a little stockier, he's having a little bit of trouble getting off flurries of punches. Um, maybe he's taking a little bit of a rest too, because you know they they were throwing on the feet. Uh, referee Troy Wall standing him up. There's about thirty seconds left in the round. And they're gonna slug it out here toward the end. See what happens here. And I think that was Troy's. Uh, and yeah, you got, was to yeah, bring it back up and uh, oh yeah, yeah, he, he dropped yeah, him yeah. with that one. Yeah, you got Trevor. He'd been working on that uppercut. It was working for him the whole round. And he's trying to finish here. Uscola is going to survive the round. You but... you can kind of you can kind of make a case for the uh the end of that fight, the end of that round. The stand up really enabled Frangley to to take that round without any much question at all um, yeah he, he yeah was fairly it, close up into that point and then he just he took advantage of that and did what he needed to do no so, yeah but it may have been it may have been a fight altering stand-up it's one of the reasons i'm not a fan of stand-ups because uskola yeah. could have maybe been on top at the end of the round doing a little bit of work but maybe uh resting up and instead he went back hammered from the uppercut yeah and uh you know his bell was a little bit rung uh, well, there, you know, were, there were some out. of the members of the of the uh, Bulldog and AFC hierarchy that liked the stand ups. Um, they they pressed for for those to to yeah. create for action. For I do sure. remember hearing them calling out for it and everything. And we mentioned the Bulldog. We, we mentioned the Bulldog bottles. I can't help but notice uh, she wasn't bad. You know, what crazy I mean? Bob Cook, crazy Bob Cook in the corner with Trevor Prangley. And I believe Casey was cornered by Tom Supnet, who yeah. was his uh, manager and also a referee in the future uh, up in the uh, great, great Northwest time. area. Very, very knowledgeable, very uh, good guy, good friend of the sport kind of thing. Skull came out, tried to land that big oh. bomb, and now he's starting. Anthony yeah, he came back to the ground. He's trying to get uh, the guillotine. He's, he's not, he doesn't have his guard closed up. He's not going to be able to get that guillotine. He's going to have to let it go. And uh, Trevor's actually in a good position for the arm triangle, which is, I believe, how he closes out the fight. Now, when Trevor squeezes on you, you can tell yeah. his arms and you know, his neck and shoulders is built. It wasn't going to last long in case he was probably already tired and a little bit hurt. So he got out of there now a little and bit. And me right out of the gate. Sign of respect. Trevor comes over and actually gives him a 
little kiss on the forehead. I, I think it's you know, no 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 knock. I I think Trevor's a, a honorable gentleman, and I think he knows he was in a fight, and uh, that was a, a sign of respect there to Casey, who, who did come to give his all, took the fight on short notice, and uh, you know he he there's nothing there again that that hug and. You, you could tell by Trevor's body language there that uh, Casey Uscola won mounds of respect there uh, in this fight. So uh, th they're, that's de they're definitely, uh, you know, those are two dogs of war right there. And it's, it couldn't have gone much any other way than that. But uh, yeah, well, there, there's Fedor. There's yeah. Fedor with his uh, Fedor number one t-shirt. Uh, and uh, we got Trevor Prangley getting his hand raised. And well deserved, well yep. earned. He, yep. he he did a lot of good work for us. Yeah, for sure. He like I said, he wound up with the Bodog belt. Um, Prangley, a guy that uh beat Chael Sonnen twice, and then I believe lost to him in the third match. Which you know, usually after you beat a guy twice, you you don't rematch him again. But uh, right. it was in the UFC, and then he went and lost to him in the UFC. And um, to be honest with you, Trevor wasn't um. Uh, one of the people that Joe Silva really liked. I, I liked him. I thought he was a, a warrior and you could put him in with anybody hardworking. Um, I would have at this moment, right around here when he, and, and when he went on to win the Yuki Kondo fight to win the Bulldog title. Um, I don't know how he would have done, but I, I would have put him in with Anderson Silva. He, he was that level of athlete. Um, and that level of fighter, we talked about that fight. He wanted that fight. You know, there was going to be uh, an easy make there because of, of the contracts and organizations and stuff. But I'll tell you, it, you know, if the, the laws and the contracts and the paperwork had materialized, it wasn't going to be Trevor that said no to that fight. So, um, yeah, I, I think Trevor goes down as an un unsung hero. If you look at Sure Dog, his record is 34 and 11. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end, towards the end of his career, he maybe took a couple of losses that I would have expected him to win. Uh, he later, he actually fought Roger Gracie as well, uh, who was in the audience here. So I guess Roger got a, a, an early scout on him there. Um, and uh, that's how Bodog Fight started. This is uh, the very first fight of the very first day of Bodog Fight, uh, when everybody went down to Costa Rica uh, with the big crew and everything. Uh, to start uh, that ball rolling, it lasted about 18 months after this, and uh, it was a hell of a ride, Bob. Well, I tell you what, Trevor Prangley's one of the one of the uh, best guys that we had on our our roster. I felt he was a, he was great. Always showed up to fight. Very easy to work with. He was he's the kind of guy that represents the sport well. Um, For sure, you know, he doesn't cause trouble. He's not out. Um, giving you a bad name he's just a, a really solid guy yeah good hard fighter i would have put my money on him on just about anybody at that point um, he yeah was for really sure for sure he was definitely just, one of those guys that uh bodog was going to put the flag behind him um you know he, he managed to win the middleweight belt in a super fight with yuki kondo as well um he was hitting yuki and he said oh i could in the second round every time i hit him in the body i could hear him start making noises i knew i had him you know just a, yeah. a, a mean guy and i'll tell you another interesting little fact about troy uh about uh trevor uh, not mean outside the ring but in the ring different story um yeah. a doctor also and, and a smart guy too you know speaks afrikaans he's from south africa um well spoken just uh you know easy to deal with good in interviews but a uh, doctor once told me that he'd never seen any human being that had a skull that thick. And oh. uh, you could he could take a punch. And, uh, you know, uh, you, show, you saw that in this fight because Uscola landed a couple of clean shots. Uh, Uscola once told me, too, right after that fight, he said, I hit him with my best shot. And he kind of did one of those, like, he turned and then he looked at me again like that, <laughs> you know? And uh, he yeah. said, that shit's deflating in a fight. And I can imagine when you got Trevor Prangley coming at you, uh, it's tough to stay in there. Skull stayed in there. Uh, much respect to both of them. And that's why I wanted to show this on Classic Fights. Um, I thought Bodog got off their foot uh, with a great fight, and uh, that it deserves credit. And I'll tell you this, too. Um, he might be from South Africa, but nobody's more proud to be an American than Trevor Prangley, you can believe that. He's, he's proud that he's a, a U.S. citizen and uh, 
he's he's a stand-up guy all the way around. I mean, That's, great fighter, but a great human being as well. Yeah, great family man. I've been to house in Idaho. He uh, went to school in northern Idaho, wrestled on a scholarship, stayed. He lives in Coeur d'Alene, a beautiful city with a beautiful lake. Um, and when I was at his house, uh, his kids were about two years old. I suspect they're heading close to their 20s by now, so it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, my hat's off to Trevor. And my hat's off to Casey. Thanks for the fight, guys. Good stuff.